This is Rob with Sigma 3 Survival School and today I wanted to sit down and just kind of discuss you know my library and, and some of the books that I own and have been studying for uh, at least the last decade and I've got a pretty extensive library. I'm not going to show you every book and I'm not going to necessarily say which one is the best because every book has some little tidbit to offer. There really is no manual out there that is completely comprehensive with the best survival skills for every area. So uh, it's really hard to rank books according to you know what is the best of the best or the top 10. So I'm just going to discuss my library and, and tell you which books that I personally like the best and, and feel like they have the most to offer. And you know, first I'm going to start covering primitive skills books. And you know, why would anybody want to learn primitive skills? Well, to me, primitive skills is the foundation for all things survival. If you have primitive skills, it doesn't matter whether you're in an urban environment, wilderness environment, it doesn't matter what portion of the world that you're in. If you have basic primitive skills, you can always take care of those needs, whether it be shelter, water, fire, food, tools, navigation. All those, those basic kind of survival priorities can be done with primitive skills and no tools. So, um, you know, the problem I see out there in a lot of survival communities is that they train for scenarios, you know, prepping for instance. Prepping, uh, in my mind, is trading one dependent source for one that you now have to defend and, and may potentially have to make mobile. I'm not saying anything against prepping. I just personally believe that you should start with primitive skills and survival skills and bushcraft as your foundation and then once you have those basis of skills and can take care of yourself in any scenario then you build upon that like like a pyramid and you know once you get away from primitive skills I believe that the skills get a little bit more specific and scenario based and have a little bit more you know less use fundamentally so always start with the primitive stuff and work your way up now I'm a firm believer in, in you know, modern equipment and I definitely have a large gear storage and I, I love using gear but if I find myself in a situation without that gear I always have an insurance policy that will take care of me no matter what so um, let's just kind of get into some of the books that I have and I'm just going to start in this video with uh, primitive skills and uh, bushcraft related books and so um, first book I'll talk about, and not necessarily because it's the best, is you know books by Ray Mears. Ray Mears, in my opinion, is probably the best you know TV personality out there in the world. He's you know kind of the guy that started it. A lot of people accredit you know the whole survival TV thing with Survivor Man, but you know Ray Mears was around a lot longer than he was, and he's got you know a ton of books out there from all sectors of the world covering a wide range of skills that is very useful. It, it you know, covers primitive as well as modern survival skills. Uh, this book here happens to be the Outdoor Survival Handbook. It's a, it's a good one. Um, you know, Ray Mears book on bushcraft is fantastic and almost any book that you pick up from Ray Mears is going to be a great, great read. Um, Mark Elbrock, another great author. He's got, uh, you know, more than one book out there and uh, this book in particular, Wilderness Survival, Living Off the Land with the clothes in, on your back and the knife on your belt is almost kind of a diary of a trip and a manual on how to survive all rolled into one and it's a very good read. I definitely suggest you pick it up. Um, Morris Kachansky, you know, obviously a huge name in this industry, great book, uh, very focused on kind of northern alpine skills and it's you know very centric to that so you know if you live in an area that's different than that you you might want to choose another book but a lot of the skills that he teach uh, teaches in the manual are you know fairly universal and you know he's one of the kind of big founding fathers of the whole survival or bushcraft movement here within the last 30 40 years and you know definitely a good read something that you should you should check out um, one of my favorite books is called Shelter Shacks and Shanties by DC Beard and I kind of consider myself a bit of a uh, you know shelter fanatic almost I uh, you know ran a construction company for years and have been building houses and 
you know, doing construction related things for a long time. So, you know, if you've paid attention to our channel or our groups and seen some of the pictures of shelters I've constructed, I really always try to go above and beyond in my shelter building. I want it to be extremely comfortable. I don't believe that you should have kind of this, um, you know, mentality where we just have to go out and barely make it. I'm more of a bushcrafter and a primitive skills guy than a guy who's going to teach you how to get out of the woods. I want to teach you the skills to live in the woods. And Shelter Shacks and Shanties is kind of a book that really explores in depth, you know, very long term shelters of our ancestors and how they can be built for different environments. So, definitely a great read. Um, Wildwood Wisdom by Ellsworth Yeager is also kind of a manual with a lot of hodgepodge of different skills. Very good, you know, manual in general. I really, really like it a lot. It's got um, a lot of skills that, you know, some might see as outdated, but, you know, that you can really never know too much about this stuff. Uh, you know, I truly believe that survival skills are, are so essential and that we've lost touch with those in our modern society that, you know, these kind of things ought to be taught in elementary school. I mean, we should be raising our kids up to learn this stuff from a very early age. Not because of some end of the world scenario or shit's gonna hit the fan. This, that is not why I do this. I, you know, it's great to be prepared for things that may come, but it's really just about getting in touch again with our roots of self-reliance and becoming independent and learning how to survive and thrive in our environment with a minimal amount of tools. And, um, you know, it's great to have the modern stuff, but you want to start with that foundation of being able to do it from almost nothing. And then uh, once you have those skills, then add the other stuff in. So definitely a great book to check out. Some kind of older manuals uh, by E.H. Kreps, uh, Woodcraft, you know, this is a very popular book uh, among bushcrafters, um, you know, it, it covers a, a, you know, fairly wide range of skills. Uh, Daniel Beard's Camp Lore and Woodcraft, another kind of old school manual that, um, you know, has some almost kind of mountain man style skills in it. Uh, that is, you know, also good for you, know, you bushcrafters out there. And then, of course, everybody's heard of Horace Kephart. Uh, this is the book of camping and woodcraft. And, you know, he, in my mind, you know, he helped popularize the, you know, the, the, the whole woodcraft and, uh, you know, bushcrafting thing back in the early 1900s. And, you know, his books were, were very popular and, um, you know, there's some skills in there that would not be applicable to you at all. It's but but with any any survival manual or book out there, you want to kind of chew the meat and spit out the bones. You know, figure out what works for you and for your style, and you want to cultivate a you know kind of full circle ideology about survival. And it's different for everybody. I mean, even even something as simple as a bug out bag. My bug out bag is going to be different than your bug out bag because my skills are different and the area that I live in is different. So you, you have to take, you know, what works for you and then, you know, just uh, log the, the, the rest in the back of your memory. Um, some other fantastic manuals out there written by John and Jerry McPherson, uh, very popular instructors within the community. They've written a couple of really good books. Um, you may have heard of them, kind of Naked into the Wilderness series, and uh, they are very good reads. Uh, John is, is, you know, kind of an expert in walking out there with no knife and doing it with nothing more than rocks. And, uh, you know, I do applaud that style, but, you know, in our modern day and age, it, it, in my mind, it's better to have a, you know, basic EDC set. I mean, yeah, I can go and reconstruct all these items, you know, from a knife to a water container and you know I can take care of my basic needs with absolutely no tools but if I even have like a five or ten piece kit it exponentially increases my overall efficiency and being able to survive in comfort and you know you want to have these basic skills that John shows but once you get those skills knocked out then you know start focusing on using some of those more modern tools so that you can survive and greater comfort, be faster, more efficient, and, you know, get these, these, you know, basic bushcraft jobs done quickly. Always remember that knowledge weighs nothing. You know, pounds equals pain, and um, the more you know, the less you carry, so 
getting those primitive skills comes in very handy. Then, Survival Skills of Native California, written by Paul Campbell. Probably one of the best primitive skills manuals ever written, by far. He is just an amazing, amazing man. Uh, now, obviously, in the title, it's for Native California, and, and many of the skill sets that are talked about in this book are for that area. But it is a very universal manual. Um, you know, there's so many different types of baskets and traps and you know, techniques that are used and talked about by Paul Campbell, who was an absolute genius of primitive skills, guys. He, you know, was an amazing man, and uh, he recently died, which was unfortunate, but, you know, he left a great legacy in this book for us all to have for our own training and, and you know, developing our, our bushcraft skills. So, if you're going to pick up one survival manual, I think this is going to be at least your top three. Um, another great book... Richard Graves, Bushcraft. It's um, you know it's just like almost any other survival manual. It's got a variety of skill sets covered in it. You know some better than others. Um, and then getting into very in depth primitive skills. This is probably outside of the skill set of most people just interested in survival would be uh, books by Hillary Stewart. And I started picking up these books because I wanted to increase my primitive living skills to a level that, you know, almost if, if I had to recreate civilization and start from absolutely nothing, what would be the skill sets I would need in order to do that? How did our, our ancient Indian ancestors live and what skill sets did they use and techniques in order to procure their game? And, you know, anybody can go out and knock out shelter, water, and fire. But, you know, my philosophy is what separates the men from the boys is being able to put food on the table consistently. Anybody can just go out there and make it, you know, like for 10 or 21 days, like you see, you know, Survivor Man do, for instance, or uh, Naked and Afraid, some of these popular TV shows out there. I mean, you can fast that entire time. As long as you don't die of hypothermia, um, you, you know, you're going to make it. But once you get past those, you know, those basic kind of time frames, you have to have a skill set that is different than no your normal survival skills. You have, you know, your primitive skills, you've got bushcraft, and you've got survival skills. And survival skills is mainly with a short-term emphasis. And if you only have basic survival skills, that's, you know, honestly, guys, that's going to take care of... 99% of the situations you would find yourself in in a you know modern society but if for whatever reason you know if, if these things failed um, you know primitive skill sets being able to reconstruct uh, you know something from from nothing and doing it with very, very little tools is you know something that interests me you know obviously I'm a full-time survival instructor and you know, the, the basics get a little bit boring after, you know, doing them for over a decade. And, you know, I want to expand my skills to a level where I could survive, you know, with nothing in any environment and, and do it, you know, forever if need be. And Hillary Stewart really gets into a just overwhelming amount of information about the way that our Indians lived and the tools and techniques that they use to, to catch fish, I mean, to make fires, you, you name it. Um, this particular book is Indian Fishing. Um, it's early methods of the Northwest Coast and how our Indian ancestors would go out and catch, you know, huge fish with using nothing more than primitive tackle. And In fact, a, a buddy of mine actually told me he's got a friend out on the Northwest Coast that just caught a 200-pound halibut, I believe it was, in over 200 feet of water uh, using primitive tackle and if you have the right skill sets and abilities you can you can literally walk out into the wilderness naked with nothing and survive with just your wits and you know these people take it to, to that skill level and you know Hillary Stewart's books are great this is about fishing uh, this book called Cedar uh, goes into the in-depth uses of you know just the cedar tree and up in the northwest there is an abundance of it as well as you know all throughout the country or at least a good chunk of the country I know we have tons of cedar around here and it has just an immense amount of uses from fire making you can make baskets with it uh, you know we strip the roots off of 
the or strip the fiber off of roots in order to make improvised bow drill cords. I mean the the uses of cedar are almost endless and she gets very in depth about those skill sets and then another book that she wrote was stone bone antlers and shell and it just gets into the use of you know uh, bones and shells and kind of um, some very advanced uh, primitive skills such as flint napping and pecking and making axe heads and you know how our Indian ancestors did that um, some other great books out there, Thomas Elpel, Primitive Living, Self-Sufficiency and Survival Skills. Uh, Thomas Elpel is a really great guy and uh, one of the, the, my favorite books in the world is called Botany in a Day and he wrote that manual and I can't say enough great things about it. It teaches you to identify plants according to families and you know, you'll learn so much in just the first couple of chapters. Uh, approximately eight plant families represent um, almost, you know, I think about 60% of all plant species worldwide. And when you learn how to identify the plant families, you don't necessarily need to understand all the species within those plant families because certain families have no poisonous, uh, you know, species. And so having that information is fantastic. This specific book goes into advanced primitive skill sets, you know, he does a lot of buckskinning and um, actually runs courses up uh, in the Montana area. Really fantastic guy, um, always great to work with. Um, another book, Plant Technologies of the People of British Columbia. This book, um, written by Nancy J. Turner, just really gets into in great depth about, you know, fiber usage, which, you know, any of you who've done primitive skills for very long knows that being able to procure uh, fibers from the land and then turn those into rope and other things that you can use for your survival needs is a very very handy skill set to have. Uh, our lead primitive skills instructor Josh Hamlin, you know, uh, as many of you know, uh, survived off the land for two years and you know, he talks about how he was making cordage almost every single night around the fire because you can just never have enough of it. Um, Tracking books, there's a lot of tracking books. I won't get into too many of them. Tracking and the Art of Seeing, How to Read Animals, Tracks and Sign by Paul Resendez is a very good book. It um, you know, covers things uh, very in depth. It talks a lot about measurements of trails, you know, size of tracks, which can be very useful and um, definitely a highly recommended book. Um, another book that I have uh, Trap Building, Modern and Primitive by Burt Monroe, Massey, and Stromberg. This is a very old book that is more of a homesteading style trapping in my opinion, but it does have some primitive traps in there that are very useful. Um, Desert Survival Skills books by, um, this one is Desert Survival Skills by David Alloway. Uh, great handbook. It's, um, you know, it's been in print for quite a while and, and I believe uh, David died, but um, he really passed on some really great information in his book here. And then a book by one of my friends, uh, John Campbell, uh, The Arizona Bushman, Survival in the Southwest. This is going to help you understand desert survival really, really well. Um, great book to pick up, and, and John's a really great dude. I, I really like him. He's actually from my local area, even though uh, he lives out in Arizona these days. Uh, Camping and Survival by Paul, Ta or Paul Taurell um, is, is kind of an interesting read. It's got a ton of different uh, techniques. I mean, it's really kind of an encyclopedia. Um, another book that I don't currently have with me that is fantastic, that is somewhat similar to this, and it's probably one of my personal favorite uh, survival manuals to cover, you know, basic survival skills, is Survival Wisdom and Know How. and um, it's a big, you know, encyclopedia green book, and I really, really love that manual. That's one of the first ones I started reading when getting into these skills. And this, by no means, is is all of my books, or you know, all the books I've owned uh, within my survival career. I've actually had, a, unfortunately, a lot of students have walked off with a very you know, good percentage of my library. I have a bad habit about loaning this stuff out and then it never comes back to me. But, you know, 
I gained those skills from the books and hopefully, you know, hopefully they can gain something from them as, uh, as well. So I've got a lot of books here that, uh, books that I've read that I, I thoroughly enjoyed but uh, don't currently have anymore because of that reason. Um, another great book by Thomas L. Pell, Participating in Nature. It uh, goes into more depth about primitive skills. And then probably the best overall books out there on the market for bow making are the uh, traditional Bowyer's Bible. And I mean, they cover every aspect of bow making for any type of bow that you would like to make. And, um, you know, we also have a DVD on the website that's for sale made by Mike Yancey that uh, covers a lot of these advanced um, techniques. But, you know, there's nothing out there on the market that really covers more skills and more diversity than uh, the traditional Bowyer's Bibles. And then, my favorite pocket field guide for survival is the SAS Survival Guide and it's um, really the only manual that you could stick in a pocket or you would want to carry with you in a bug out bag or something along those lines that's actually feasible you know, to carry, it doesn't weigh very much, it covers a ton of skills, everything is uh, well summarized and in short form with good pictures. So. Uh, definitely a great book to look at and to, to pick up. Can't hardly go wrong with it. Um, Lofty Wiseman has been doing this for years. So um, that's just a, you know, overview of the basic books that I have in my library. Like I said, I've got a whole lot more and there's a lot of other books out there on the market that, that I do recommend. But just remember that, you know, bushcraft, primitive skills, survival skills, all these things aren't something that you're going to be able to, you know, pick up in, you know, a couple of weeks of training or, or learning. It is almost like a martial art, you know, you, you can't go learn, um, you know, a martial art and a few weekends of going over to the dojo. You, you've got to spend a, a lot of time really kind of getting in depth with these skills and figuring out works, what works for you and what works best in your environment and then try to reconnect with those basic self-reliance skills and like I said in the beginning these are the foundation of all self-reliance. Primitive skills you should start there and then work your way up and I, I personally believe that kind of the evolution that, that we've taken is from hunter-gatherer which is what this stuff is to you know, to farmer, to modern day society. So kind of the next step for, you know, you modern survivalists out there is to get into learning permaculture and learning how to farm. You know, eventually our hunter-gatherer ancestors figured out that it was a, a heck of a lot easier to go out and grow a seed and then harvest it than it was to trek all over the land to try to find wild plants and use conservation principles in order to cultivate those. And so permaculture is kind of the next step up from survival skills and then we get into you know survival in, in modern society and that can include a plethora of things uh, from tactical skills to you know seer to learning herbal medicine to um, you know there's so many different things that, that we need to know in our modern society in order to succeed and you know probably Probably the, one of the most useful things that, that I would say that you should learn would be herbal medicine. And, you know, I've had the privilege to train under Sam Kaufman, who I personally believe is one of the best herbalists on the planet. I mean, the guy is an absolute rocket scientist of plants. I, you know, me and Josh Hamlin thought we were pretty good at these skills, and I mean, we're even writing a book. And um, I really, truly believe that Sam Kaufman is, is just fantastic at this stuff. And he runs courses here at, at Sigma 3. And um, go out there and learn some herbal medicine. Learn your plants. Learn the things that you can use in your everyday life. Because in a modern society, we're not going to learn a lot of, uh, or we're not going to get to put to use a lot of survival skills. This, this is more of a hobby and, you know, a way of reconnecting with what our ancestors did. So, so many things that you can do, you know, from learning tactical skills, learning martial arts, learning herbal medicine, and things that will protect you and help you survive and thrive in our modern society. So, 
Um, hopefully you appreciated this, you know, kind of outline of different books that I own and I'll be doing some more videos on uh, plant manuals and some herbal medicine manuals coming up right after this. So uh, stay tuned. As always, we appreciate your support of Sigma 3. Uh, we are growing like an absolute weed and that is all thanks to you. Um, you know, please support us by sharing these videos, posting them in forums, you know, share, like, subscribe, and, and comment down there at the bottom if you've got a question. I'm not always the fastest about getting back to the answers of them, but um, I eventually will get to you if you have a legitimate question. So, as always, we appreciate you. Thanks and have a great day.